Next challenge. I'm going to try to have a self-rally with the hoop. So I'm going to bump it with my forehand side up, bounce inside the hoop, comes out the other side. I change, I hit with my backhand up, bounce out the other side with my forehand. I'm going to go very slowly and quite high to give myself time to change the racket and get to the other side of the ball. When we've learned how to control the ball well in our own small space, we're going to use all of those skills and move it on to having a rally against a wall. So everything that we've done started with just dropping the ball and hitting it. Because if you're playing on your own, the first thing you've got to do is obviously drop the ball for you to be able to hit. We've done lots of that inside the hoops. So I'm going to stand sideways on because I want the ball to go straight. If I stand like this, the ball is more likely to go off to the side. So I'm going to stand straight. And instead of bumping straight up, I'm going to bump a little bit forward. But I am trying to go up because I'm trying to work that rainbow shape. So I'm trying to judge distance and speed and direction so the ball comes back and bounces in front of me. That way I can control it. Rally of one. Now I'm going to try for two. And now three. If I wanted to try it on the backhand side, I cross my arms like this so that I can drop the ball in front of me. And I'll go bump, one. Cross my arms, now two. One, two, trap. Now three. One, two, three, trap. I'll move that on now to using the different sides of the racket. You saw me do that inside the hoop, like this and like this. So, forehand, backhand, forehand, backhand, forehand, backhand, and trap. So I might start with a rally of two, a forehand, and then a backhand, trap. And I challenge myself to build three, one, Two, three. One, two, three, and so on. So you could set yourself a time limit, 20 seconds, 25 seconds, or 30 seconds, and see how many you can get up to within the time frame, or you could just go with a personal best each day. So if today my best was six, tomorrow if I try it again, I'm going to try and get seven. I also try to rally hitting down. This looks more like a volley in tennis, but we need to be able to control the racket to control the ball in a downward motion. So I might start with a rally of one, and I'll go one, one, two, now three, one, two, three. I could try on the other side, which is much more difficult. One. Two. Three. And I could try and move from side to side. So in the one when I'm changing from forehand to backhand, I'm having to anticipate where the ball's coming off, off the wall. I'm having to do little adjustment steps around the ball, and I have to keep my racket in front of me, and I have to stay calm and in control. Because if I start to panic and go too fast, I'm going to lose control of my body, which loses control of the racket, which loses control of the ball. So staying calm under pressure, the pressure of the wall, is really important. So the shot that starts every point off in a game of tennis is called the serve. It's an overhead shot that looks something like this. Now you can practice this with a racket if you have one, or a stick. So the shadow stroking for me is a great way to mimic the movements that any shot will ask you to do. You can do all of these in whatever small space you have. 
If you don't have a racket or you don't have a lot of height, you can stick a tennis ball or a play ball inside a sock. You hold on to the edge of the sock, you turn to the side and you mimic the movements like this. So a long sock, a tennis ball, before you know it, you'll have a serve like Andy Murray. <laughs>